Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I will be introducing you to Merit-Based Incentive Payment System, also known as MIPS. The Medicare Access and Chip Reauthorization Act of 2015, also known as MECRA, ended the sustainable growth rate formula, which would have resulted in a significant cut to payment rates for clinicians participating in Medicare. CMS is required by law to implement a quality payment incentive program, referred to as the Quality Payment Program, which rewards value and outcomes in one of two ways. Merit-Based Incentive Payment System, also known as MIPS, and Advanced Alternative Payment Models, also known as APMS. Like I shared earlier, there are two ways to participate in quality program, merit-based incentive program and advanced alternative payment models. If you are a MIPS eligible clinician, you will be subject to a performance-based payment adjustment through MIPS. If you decide to participate in an advanced APM, you may earn a Medicare incentive payment for sufficiently participating in an innovative payment model. MIPS combines physician quality reporting system, value-based payment modifier, Medicare EHR incentive program for eligible professionals into a single improved program. The performance categories of MIPS and their weights for performance year 2021 are quality 40%, cost 20%, Improvement Activities 15%, Promoting Intraparability 25%. MIPS moves Medicare Part B clinicians to a performance payment system where the score is based off of percentages in performance categories. If you sum that all up 40, 20, 15, and 25, that will get you 100% of your MIPS final score. MIPS also provides clinicians with flexibility to choose measures that are meaningful to their practice. If a clinician or group were participating in PQRS, that is similar under MIPS to the quality performance category. If participating in value-based payment modifier, which would also include elements of the PQRS quality data, that now maps to the MIPS performance category of cost. If you participated in, in the past in the EHR legacy program that was streamlined into the MIPS performance category called promoting interoperability. In order to be MIPS eligible clinician, you must be identified as a MIPS eligible clinician type on Medicare Part B claims, have enrolled in Medicare before 2020, not be a qualifying alternative payment model participant and exceed the low volume threshold as an individual. In order to be MIPS eligible as part of a group, you must be identified as a MIPS eligible clinician type on Medicare Part B claims. Have enrolled in Medicare before 2020, not be a qualifying alternative payment model participant and be associated with a practice which exceeds the low volume threshold. If you are MIPS eligible in your group, you will receive a score and payment adjustment based on group reporting when the group reports. To be eligible in a virtual group, you must be identified as a MIPS eligible clinician type on Medicare B claims, have enrolled in Medicare before 2020, not be a qualifying alternative payment model participant and participate in a practice that exceeds the low volume threshold and is part of a virtual group. Clinicians and practices must exceed the low volume threshold during both review periods to be eligible for MIPS. Each determination period consists of two 12-month segments. 
Beginning with performance year 2021, low volume threshold determinations will no longer be determined at the APM entity level. Alternative payment model entity may now report to MIPS on behalf of associated MIPS eligible clinicians. Qualifying APM participants and partial qualifying alternative payment model participants that elect not to report to MIPS are not required to MIPS. MIPS eligible clinicians who participate in a MIPS APM have the option to report the APM performance pathway. Now let's talk about what low volume threshold is. You must participate in MIPS unless otherwise exempt. If in both 12 month segments, you bill more than $90,000 for Part B covered professional services and see more than 200 Part B patients and provide more than 200 covered professional services to Part B patients. You are eligible to report for MIPS if you are a MIPS eligible clinician type and also meet all the other requirements. If you are not one of these clinician types, you are excluded from reporting. Physicians, including doctors of medicine, osteopathy, dental surgery, dental medicine, podiatric medicine, and optometry. Osteopathic practitioners, chiropractors, physician assistants, nurse practitioners, clinical nurse specialists, certified registered nurse anesthetist, physical therapist, occupational therapist, clinical psychologist, qualified speech language pathologist, qualified audiologist, registered dietitians or nutrition professionals. This slide contains references. Hopefully you now have some understanding of the merit-based incentive payment system. If you like this video, please do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. See you next time.